Cape Town firefighters continue to dampen down hot spots on the fourth floor of the National Assembly building. Officials say the inside of the house has been extensively destroyed by the blaze, water and smoke. And fire crews hope to wrap up their work in the next two to three hours. For the very latest, my co-anchor Annika Larson is down at Parliament. Let's cross to her now. Uh, Larson, this is not the way we expected to start this year. Me over here, you over there. But this is a huge tragedy. And for someone like you, who spent a lot of time in that precinct. It must have evoked so many emotions seeing those buildings up in flames. Absolutely. It's history. South Africa's history up in flames. It started uh, very close to the People's Cathedral, which is St. George's Cathedral for those in Joburg who uh, just need some context of how close the two buildings are. Just a few hours later after Archbishop uh, Emeritus Desmond Tutu uh, was, uh, had his official uh, funeral at St. George's Cathedral, the fire started very close to a corridor uh, at the old assembly. Assembly wing. Now, to give you an idea, the old assembly wing is the first building that was built in around uh, the 1900s. Uh, it's full of wood, it's got carpeting, and it's also where Dimitri Safendis murdered or killed uh, Hendrik Favut, the apartheid prime minister. So uh, a very historic area. And behind me, what you can see is the new wing of the National Assembly. Now, the National Assembly is way more, and Parliament is so much more than the theatrics or the pantomime that you see played out in the past on the State of a Nation address days. It's actually where uh, the country's seat is of legislation. It's where a new president is elected. It's where where the passing of law happens. It ensures government oversight. And most importantly, it approves government spending. It's also a place where many people of all different uh, parts of South Africa gather for several months of the year to debate and discuss, to pass laws and make friendships. And that's at the very heart of so much uh, of Parliament and why it's been such a vibrant part of the country's history. I'm going to step aside slightly, Taps, just to show you that uh, the entrance is absolutely charred. And Patricia DeLille said to us a little earlier that while she wasn't allowed inside, uh, it's pitch black inside there. There are no lights working. And as you know, the benches are made of wood. There is extensive fire fire and smoke damage and they're still damping down hot spots because there were parts of the building that were very difficult to get near to because they were trapped uh, oxygen trapped uh, by hot air so those uh, areas are still vulnerable it's still not safe enough to go inside the uh, National Assembly, which is adjacent to the president's office here in Cape Town called Tainhays. Uh, there are historic artifacts that apparently have been saved. The library has been saved. It was waterproofed some years ago when a fire started out in 2021. Uh, and so that fortunately is safe. But there is extensive smoke damage to other parts of this chamber, which will probably, if ever rebuilt, take years years uh, to happen. It was a very important and special structure in not just the city, but as the seat of lawmaking in this country, TAPS. Uh, Annika, there's, uh, there's, there's a 49-year-old suspect who is going to appear in court in connection with the fire at Parliament. Do we know anything more about this individual? And uh, there was a clip just now of Patricia DeLille saying they're asking questions about why there's CCTV footage of this guy, but no one actually saw him going in or prevented him from going into the building. A any, any news on that? Look, there's several, there's several factors here. Crescendo, if you can just pan to the left of you, please. Usually there are many homeless people sitting uh, and sleeping along those walls there. Uh, and uh, if you can just, Crescendo, just uh, pan again to the right where you can see there's going to be police tape put up. Uh, there are a lot of people who set up for the night here as well. I don't know whether this man was perhaps able, a uh, homeless person who was able to jump over the gate. It's absolute conjecture at this stage. But I can tell you I'll be very surprised if charges stick because the truth is that patrols were reduced, that it was holiday time, 
and uh, these buildings, the, the electricity infrastructure is in many cases ancient. And uh, it, it, it is so old. If you go to parts of this building, it, it, in my mind, needed an absolute upgrade. I don't know if any of the uh, recommendations made from the previous fire were actually taken up. But uh, let's just give you an idea of the hell and fury of those flames when Parliament went up in smoke on late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. I believe somebody <clears throat> is being held right now and they are being questioned but we need to go a lot deeper, a lot mm. deeper uh, into how this type of event can take place. Hello, boss. Thank you. Absolutely horrific images coming out from uh, the fire yesterday. Lawson, you mentioned the electrical infrastructure. You mentioned uh, the construction of the buildings, the contents, the wood, the carpets. Uh, it, it really was just a recipe for disaster. Uh, but there was that fire last year in March, and pol politicians, some politicians and unions have come out to say this could have been prevented. Absolutely, and we'll speak to them a little later because the question is whether any of those recommendations made in that report were taken up. We do know that the library was fireproofed, so that was done, and that fortunately has saved the library. There's also a question about whether the water valve leading to the fire sprinklers was in fact closed. But let's bring in uh, the uh, head of safety and security here for the city. Uh, that is J.P. Smith. Uh, J.P., I'm going to stand away from you because um, I've got my mask, uh, my mask is just broken you off on this side. You me to any more COVID than um, I have. I, me neither. We are, we are done with uh, COVID. So excuse me while I stand no so far problem. away from you. Uh, JP, you've been here since the early hours of, is it Sunday morning? Yes, um, and you've got an idea of what's been happening. Uh, just tell us what you know so far. So we started obviously with having to ramp up staff very significantly. The first fire team got the call at just after 6, 12 minutes past 6 from Ruland Street, just up the road. They were here at 18 minutes past 6, did an assessment that more staff was going to be required. Five more fire stations were mobilized as far as Molniton, all assisted. Yesterday at the height of it, we had 70 firefighters on scene um, and about 12 appliances, including the large hydraulic appliances that we only recently bought, so they came in very valuably. Um, being able to put water onto the back of the site. Uh, extensive damage to the old uh, assembly hall offices. The fire seems to have started at the offices um, and that roof is gone. The two floors are destroyed, but mercifully it looks like the chamber is largely unaffected. I walked around it yesterday in the dark with uh, the provincial commissioner, General Patekile. That looks largely undamaged, maybe some fire damage. Not, unfortunately, so with the new assembly hall. Uh, one of the staff this morning says 98% destroyed. I've seen the pictures. It's completely gutted and will need hundreds of millions of rands worth of repair work. Very sad. Uh, the offices above that largely destroyed this morning. The fire department now has 10 staff members left here just dampening down the books. The very large amount of heat that is boxed in there because of the bulletproof and fireproof windows. 
that has kept the heat contained and they were just dampening down those books that were still smoldering on the shelves there uh, because the building is now being ventilated. They will withdraw in the next uh, half an hour to an hour and then starts the job for the crime scene investigators and forensic investigators to figure out what happened and, and how sadly we got here. JP, just for those who don't live in Cape Town, the Ruland Street fire station is just a few meters away, fortunately, from Parliament, and it's one of our best equipped fire stations. So that's extremely fortunate. They managed to get here in six minutes uh, and were on scene. Have you been into the new assembly chamber, do you, where we, which we see on our viewers see on television all the time? Uh, it's really where we see everything that happens uh, when it comes to legislative procedure taking place. Do you know what the state of that is like? It's completely gutted, ma'am. I saw the photographs this morning. We were not able to enter yesterday because the ceiling was collapsing and falling down. Uh, structurally, the building around the outside, as you can see, is intact. But the interior is gutted. A few of the officers escaped. Uh, some of the speakers and other officers seem to have escaped damage. Again, because the, there's no, no oxygen to propagate, the windows didn't break. So that did uh, limit the fire to a greater extent than it might otherwise have done. Um, but mostly now floors one, three, and four uh, uh, gutted or largely destroyed. The, the assembly hall completely gutted. The roof on the old assembly uh, gone and a lot of water damage, obviously. Um, so that's hundreds of millions, if not billions of rands of damage and it's heritage assets. So the restoration will have to be complex and careful. Fire maybe um, could have uh, helped a bit more if they'd been alerted earlier. Uh, it does look like the fire uh, detection system did not activate rapidly. Uh, we were here more than 20 minutes on site before that system activated the first time. So the firefighters were already starting to put the fire out when the system activated. So there's definitely a maintenance issue there. We also observed some systems that were meant to have been serviced in 2020, uh, but were last serviced in 2017. So there, is, uh, there are some issues, and all those observations, the two fire safety experts we have on site will be putting into a report, and we will be handing that to SAPS and the parliamentary staff so that they can look into it and how we how we remedy those situations into the future. There's also a problem with the electricity not shutting off. It's supposed to trip. That didn't happen, so we had to manually shut down the power supply to the precinct. Uh, and that meant that the air conditioning systems may have carried on longer. You could see the smoke venting from the air conditioning system at the top of the new assembly building. That may have pulled the fire from the other side to here and may inadvertently have, have propagated the fire to this. Uh, it may have been an electrical fire as well. The fire 10 months ago, so in two big fires in less than a year, uh, is definitely cause of concern. That was an electrical fire. It is possible that this one, having started in the oldest building, may be similarly electrical in nature. Sub uh, subject to what happens, obviously, with sepsis investigation around the man they arrested and have now also charged with arson, I see. If, if, if that is the answer, if he was in fact the arsonist, that settles the matter, but failing that, a, a forensic investigation will then have to look at other options, including potentially an electrical fire again. Uh, JP, have you seen the CCTV footage of a lone man wandering the halls? Uh, no, ma'am, but I was informed by some of the police that they did have somebody who scaled the fence uh, and did in fact break in. How that happens in a precinct like this is slightly mind-boggling in your national key point that somebody cannot just be cheeky enough to do it but get away with it, manage to break in is a matter of massive concern and I imagine the parliamentarians will not be leaving that um, uh, easily. That is a matter that is going to get quite some attention. I understand the Deputy National Commissioner will be here now uh, this morning and I imagine that's going to be foremost on his mind how something like that happens. There is a big report around the safety limitations and problems experienced by this precinct that is on record um, and has largely not been acted on and I imagine that will now be getting a lot of attention uh, but perhaps a few hundred million rand too late. All right, JP, you've given us some crucial information there. Thank you so much uh, for your time and good luck for the rest of the day. Uh, Taps, just to recap, this sounds like a possible Molotov cocktail of events. If a person did scale the wall and did commit arson, there were so many factors allegedly at play which would have led to the spread of this fire. If the air con was on and the electrical system did not switch on, uh, switch off, that is how 
how the fire would have jumped from right at the bottom of the parliamentary precinct to where we are here, which is almost at the top. Firstly, uh, the fire alarm detection system, the warning system, according to J.P. Smith, only went off 20 minutes after firefighters had got here and certain safety fire checks that were meant to have been done uh, in 2020 had not been done since 2017. So that's already three very serious uh, maintenance issues that need to be addressed over and above a possible arsonist being in the precinct. Where were the patrols? Back to you, Taps. Yeah, and all of those factors, Larson, leading to, as J.P. Smith said, 98% of the new assembly building being absolutely gutted, totally gone. We've lost it. So much history and heritage. Annika Larson is at the parliamentary precinct all morning long and will be talking to uh, several people about this national, uh, national tragedy. Uh,